Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to fix excessive slop in a Ford shifter or in extreme cases, such as the case of this blue excursion, how to fix a broken shift shaft on these Ford vehicles. It's a common issue, the bushings wear out, in my opinion it's a pretty poor design that gets really loose over time, especially if there's a lot of shifting between park, reverse, and drive, etc. So we're going to take the shifter column apart and I'm going to show you how to repair this and fix it yourself. Apply the brake and you try to shift it and nothing happens and as you can see the little gear shift indicator is not lining up correctly. There is a way around this if you happen to be stranded in the middle of nowhere and you have to get somewhere with your vehicle. You can go underneath the steering column here behind the dash on the driver's side above the brake pedal as you've seen in my previous video if you've watched it before how to fix a loose shifter these are the bolts that can back out well this bracket is what moves when you shift the vehicle now there's a little stud at the end of the bracket there which is this piece that you're looking at right now and this shift cable end the transmission shift cable end which you see moving right there that little bushing goes on the little pin right here the little stud and that's what shifts the transmission. So if you're stuck and stranded somewhere, you can shift the vehicle. Be very careful. I highly recommend you use two people to do this so one can hold the brake and the other can shift the vehicle. If you want to shift the vehicle into reverse, you would push this cable in. Push it this way. One step down will go into reverse. Two more steps will go into drive. And then you pull it all the way back out, pull it out this way, all the way out, and that'll put the vehicle in park. So in case you're stranded and you need to get the vehicle moved, that's how. But for now, let me show you how to fix this problem. Now, I've already got this taken apart somewhat. Everything's unplugged, but I wanted to put it back together a little bit so you guys can see what all needs to be done. You're going to want to take the steering column adjuster lever off by basically unscrewing it. Then there will be about two or three screws on this bottom steering column cover here. And then this cover comes off like so. After you've removed the bottom steering column cover, you'll need to take the top piece off. But in order to do that, you have to remove this little plastic turnkey knob. This is basically attached to the ignition, so you're not using the actual key to turn the ignition. You're using this plastic knob here. And it pops off pretty simply. In this case, I'm just using a screwdriver. You just pry it off and then it eventually just pops off the rest of the way, just like that. From there, you can remove the top cover. And yes, you're going to kick the hazard lights on a few times while doing this. It will come off just like so. Set that off to the side. You're going to have to disconnect the overdrive off wire here. And you're going to want to slide this rubber cover back just like so. Now already you can tell we've got some serious wear here. The bushings that are normally between this hold down bracket and the shift tube are completely gone. So as you can see there's a lot of play. It's very loose. But if you look back further in the steering column you can actually see the shift tube is fractured in half. It's literally completely broken. You want to remove the fuse panel cover here. In a lot of cases you can just use your fingernails, turn those little flathead clips on the top, and then this fuse panel cover will pop off just like so. The other thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to remove this dash piece here to make it easier to get to. You will have to unplug a lot of electrical components such as the radio, headlamp controls, your four-wheel drive switch, rear defrost, and power port. But since I've got all that unplugged already, this comes out pretty simply, as you can see. So now we have to drop the steering column to get to these tubes here, take these brackets off, and replace the tubes. This is done by removing the four 13 millimeter nuts here. Just to give you an idea of where these are at, you're looking up at the column. So your first nut is right here. Second one's on the other side. You can see the steering column starting to drop a little bit. You can see it starting to drop some more. Now make sure you got one hand, a free hand here, on the steering wheel to hold the loose column in place. 
is to take off the last nut. There's the fourth one. Now, as you can see, the steering column is loose. We can lower it down. Now you can easily see where the breakage occurred. Look at that. Now we're gonna take the first part of the broken shift tube out. And to do that, you're going to need a size 30 Torx bit and a ratchet wrench. In this case, I have my electric ratchet. And here's the top cap right here. And here is the first piece of the broken shift tube. Now in this case, I didn't have room for my electric ratchet. So I had to go back to the good old fashioned hand ones, wiggle it around, and then eventually sooner or later, it will come out. And there you go. There you have it. There's your second broken shifter piece. So let's put the new ones in. Now here are the three parts that you're gonna need to do this job. This is a tube. As you can see here, there's a tube. That's the first part. Second part you have here is the plunger. There's a part number for you guys. Take that out. There you go. And finally, the third part or piece is these are your bushings. There's a part number right there that you'll need for these two bushings right here. Now, here's the second part of the broken shifter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the little bracket here off. Now, when you remove this bracket, keep in mind there is a little spring here. So you can see. Now, here's the new piece. So you can see old, new. We still have to remove this little pin. Take this piece out here, transfer it to the new one. What I found works all right is if you just take a little hammer, hammer that little pin out here like so. We'll slide out. There's the pin. There you go. There's the little lever. You gotta transfer the lever from the old one to the new one. You'll need to adjust the plunger like so. So once we've got the plunger lined up, we'll slide the little bracket here and push the pin back into place. And just kind of tap it back in like so. Now as you can see we've got the bottom side of the shifter tube assembled. Spring, make sure you keep that in place, don't let that fall out. And we're ready to transfer the shift lever here from the old broken piece to the new shift tube. So same thing here, we'll need to hammer this little pin out. There we go. Now we want to make sure that we take this apart and put it back together the same way that it came out. We're going to pry this little bushing out here, transfer it to the new one, just like that. And then this slides back in, get it to line up with the plunger inside, slide the pin in, just give it a little couple taps here. There you go. Now your shifter is secured. Okay, so we are just about ready to install the new shift tube. I'm gonna put the little plastic bushings on here, as you can see, just like so. There's one, and there's two. Then we're gonna take the spring, put the spring back in here. And we're gonna take this piece here, the little bracket on the very end. We're gonna slide it back into position. It's gonna compress the spring a little bit. Always, always, always start the screws by hand. You don't wanna cross thread these things. And then tighten them down the rest of the way. Okay, so here's your shift lever, tube, plunger assembly, and the shifting bracket back here, all ready to be installed. Now we didn't have to take this back bracket in here, which has one, two, three screws holding it in place. We didn't have to take this one out to get the broken shift tube out because the back half of it came out through the back. But in order to install your new one, you will have to take this bracket loose. So I'm gonna take these three screws loose here. They're 30 millimeter Torx. I'm sorry, size 30 Torx, that'd be a big Torx. Now that we've loosened up this third bracket back here, and it's gonna sit in here just like so. Okay, so we've installed this back bracket here. So you can see, one, two, three bolts are in place. Here's the back one. And we'll install the next one here. Now we'll tighten up the four nuts that hold the column to the dash. The steering wheel is nice and solid. Now back underneath the dash above the accelerator and brake pedals is we're going to reconnect the transmission shift linkage right here. 
so you can see through the bracket. This slides up on the little bracket, push it in place. That's what you want it to look like. That means it's connected. Now your transmission shift cable is actually connected to your shift lever. Don't forget to hook up the little gear shift indicator cable. It is this little cable right here. As you can see, it's gonna be a little, little spring-loaded. That's gonna hook up on this little bracket hook right here. See that? Now the little rubber bushing for the shifter here. It's gonna slide down, secure into place here. And then the little wire here plugs in right here. Now you're gonna to wanna to secure the column cover trim pieces here. So the top one goes on first, and this is always a pain. If you line up the two little screw holes here, on either side, it'll go on a lot easier. Then you take your bottom piece here, and this just slides up right into place. Goes in a lot easier than the, uh, than the top one does. Tighten up the three screws that hold the column cover pieces in place. One here, here, and here. Reinstall the column tilt lever. Just threads back in. And then the little ignition piece here. Push it a little bit, but there it goes into place. Reinstall the fuse cover here. Now comes the tricky part. We have to install this dash piece back in the truck. Now to make it easier, I pulled out all the little switches and the radio and everything, so this goes in a lot simpler. You're gonna have to shift the vehicle into first gear. Oh, I like the sound of that. That sounded like it shifted the transmission. Plug the little power port in here. We're gonna plug the lights in. Take the four-wheel drive and defroster switch here. Plug it in, that just gets pushed right back in there like that. There you go. Then the radio, there you go. The radio's installed. All right, it got dark, but we're all done. Now, we need to make sure that the transmission shifts properly, all the electronics works, and if so, we're good to go. So let's start the truck up. Lights work, let's shift it. Oh wow, nice and firm shifter. There's reverse. Let's go down into neutral. There's neutral. Drive. Yeah, good. Second gear. Good. First gear. Ah, it's beautiful. Back up in the park and there we go. So there you have it guys. Sorry it got a little bit dark, but we're all done. We replaced the broken shift tube and plunger with the new one. As you can see, there's a broken parts there. Well, we've got a new one installed in the truck. Again, this is crazy. I've never seen this happen. Maybe I just don't see enough of these trucks, but this is, uh, this is something else. It wasn't that bad of a fix. It didn't take too long, uh, it, even with all the video and everything, and this being the first time I've ever done this job, about an hour and a half or so. So really not that bad at all. And the best part, these parts weren't even really that expensive. I got all these parts from a Ford dealer for $70. So really not that bad. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up as always. Check out some other Ford repairs here that I have done on this particular excursion that you might find helpful and interesting. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.